This is the first of two videos for the topic, Writing and Evaluating a Function Modeling Continuous Exponential Growth or Decay Given Doubling Time or Half-Life. To begin, let's clarify that this video is about continuous exponential decay. Continuous exponential growth is addressed in the next video. Therefore, the information in this video only pertains to problems that state that decay is continuous as there are different formulas for functions with non-continuous or discrete decay. Okay, what kind of problems use continuous exponential decay? Continuous exponential decay is often used for determining the half-life of a substance. Half-life is the time it takes for the substance to decrease by half. This is commonly used in chemistry with unstable or radioactive molecules. Great, I understand. How would we do these problems? The formula for exponential growth or decay is y equals y naught e to the rt. In this video, we will discuss exponential decay. In the next video, we will discuss exponential growth. In this formula, y is the final amount, y naught is the initial amount, e is a constant, which is also called Euler's number, r is the relative rate of decay or growth, and t is the time. The sign of the rate r is how we differentiate between continuous exponential growth and decay. A positive r will mean continuous exponential growth, and a negative r will mean continuous exponential decay. In these problems, you will be given information about the half-life or doubling time and the initial amount of a substance. Then you will use this information to solve for the rate of growth or decay, which will require the use of the general formula y equals y naught e to the rt. That seems tricky. Can we do an example? Sure. Let's work through this example. A specific radioactive substance is decaying exponentially. It has a half-life of 8 days. At the start of the experiment, 400 grams are present. Write a formula relating y to t. Let's summarize our problem. We know that there are 400 grams initially, and the half-life is 8 days. Using your knowledge of half-lives, how much of the radioactive substance will be left after 8 days? I think there will only be half of 400, which is 200 grams after 8 days. Great work! If we use 8 days as our time, 400 grams as our initial amount, and 200 grams as our final amount, we can solve for the rate. Can you substitute these values into the general formula and solve for r? Sure, I'll give it a try. 200 equals 400 times e raised to the r times 8. I divide both sides by 400 and write r times 8 as 8r. Now I have 0 0.5 equals e raised to the 8r. I'm not really sure where to go from here. That's okay, you're on the right track. Now we will take the natural log of both sides, and then simplify the right side. In previous lessons, we have learned that natural log of e equals 1. So we rewrite the equation like this, and that means natural log of 0.5 equals 8r. Divide both sides by 8, and we get r equals natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 8. That was a really long process. Do I have to do that every time to find the half-life? No, not at all. You can instead remember this formula, r equals natural log of 0 0.5 divided by t. If we did it this way, we would solve for the rate by substituting 8 for t and get the same answer for the rate. I thought that for continuous exponential decay, the rate should be negative. Why is the rate we solved for positive? Excellent question. If we were to enter the rate expression, natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 8, into our calculator, we would get approximately negative 0 0.08664. So this confirms that the rate is, in fact, negative. Oh, that makes sense. For our final answer, we will substitute r and y naught into the general equation and write y equals 400 e to the natural log of 0 0.5 over 8 t. You can now use this equation to determine the final amount of the radioactive substance left at any point in time. For example, if we wanted to determine the amount left after 30 days, we would substitute 30 for t and get about 29.7 grams.
but make sure you are careful when rounding. Do not round intermediate steps and only round as directed.